So, today is, I think, December 30th, 2016. This is Marsha here in the garage. I came across this book, and I was just looking through this, like, box full of stuff right here. And I pulled out this book, and I opened it up, and the first thing I found was, For you were once darkness, but now you are light. In the Lord, walk as, a, walk as children of the light. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Dearly loved children of the light, too often we give children answers to remember rather than problems to solve. Okay, this is my garage. Don't judge me. It's really messy, I know. It's sort of a symbol of how, like, cluttery my, my life has been. <sighs> okay, this is the book. I don't know. Just going through this box full of stuff. Oh my gosh. I, you know, I my hair's a mess. I'll show you me. Woohoo, I'm a mess. Blah, 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 blah. But this is me in my garage. And Charlie's there. Can you see Charlie? Well, Charlie's over there. Anyways, this is my garage. And these are the things I have out. I was sitting down here on the couch going through the box of things that were sort of piled up over here in the corner. There's another crate. Anyways, it's just like blankets and de Halloween decorations and stuffed animals and a few electronic devices that we just sort of left in the corner to collect dust and it's time to get rid of all these old things. Seriously, I don't know if that's a live wire, but these are things that I'm going to look into because it's very unsafe. And literally, I feel like something has awakened in me, like this really strong desire to control my surroundings in a more positive way. I'm starting with the garage and I'm going to convert my entire garage full of just clutter stuff. Okay. It's just, you know, holiday decorations. We have a few inner tubes in there. Um, book on top that I found yesterday. I was in the garage as well. The reason why I'm in here is because my husband, you know, he, un he <laughs> uncluttered it a little bit or sort of made more sense of the clutter. And it, it, I mean, it looks bad now, but definitely if you would have seen it before, it was more just like unorganized piles of things. Now at least we have like, you know, Christmas decorations, Halloween decorations. These are decorations that we just didn't put out this year. Halloween stuff, you know, blankets and pillows, old records on an old speaker. I have an old an old box filled with just old Christmas decorations that don't like work anymore. Those are on the bottom, like, you know, like the old mini light sets that quit working. <laughs> I don't know why, we did, they just like accumulated in that box there. We have an old lawnmower, a bag of cement, like an old candle from Christmas, one of those outdoor Christmas decoration candles, anyways. You know what I mean? Just the clutter. It's just the clutter in my garage. Anyways, so this is it. I need to figure out if those wires are actually a danger or a hazard because I don't, you know, put anybody, anybody I love in a dangerous environment. I didn't even know that was like going on. So this is the back door. Okay. My backyard is a mess right now, and really and truly, this is just like this revelation I'm having this weekend. 
Christmas holiday had me really thoughtful. I've been a lot going on in my mind. I've been meditating. I found meditation a few months ago and I it just, it's really opened my eyes to like how I want to live my life and how much I've become more aware of myself and my surroundings and my wants and my needs and my ideas of what are happy to me. All of those things have become a more continuous thought pattern in my mind. I'm not living a sort of empty day, empty, hollow existence. I'm just become so much more aware of just, you know, myself, and the kind of mom I want to be, the kind of woman I am, who I am. And I just know that my calling, my feeling is to just, you know, make the very, very best out of my surroundings and turn it into something that I want. And something that I think will make me happy. And I love, I love nature. My most favorite years as a child were romping through the forest in like the, you know, the Pacific Northwest. And I want to sort of recreate that peaceful, innocent happiness that I felt as a child. And I want that to begin with, first of all, recognizing that that's primitive desire that I have to better my surroundings. I'm very curious to see if I really apply myself and if I really push on in life in a positive, meaningful way, how that will change my life. Because I have, you know, I have kids. I have, I have so many kids and I have I really want to get the best out of my life and I want those around me to learn from my mistakes and I want people to be impacted by my story and know that if somebody that can go through so much can push through it and choose positivity and self self love and acceptance and if you can use that loving place as like a starting point to how you are as a human being and how you are as a mother and as a wife and but most importantly as the foundation how to be a strong foundation for those around you how to change this weird cycle that we are in where we're walking through life and we're not really aware of what we're doing. We're just going through the motions of life and we're not putting much thought into like what the fuck we're doing. So I feel so motivated to really give this new idea of love and acceptance as my human experience a try, like a real try. Like I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for myself because when I am meditating and when I'm quiet and when I take a few minutes to think about what I want and what I need and what my what's important to me when I take the time to think about those things It's not easy because you have to really love yourself in order to want better for yourself. And in order to love yourself, you have to accept yourself. And accepting yourself is hard because you have to think about who you are and what you've been through. And confronting those things in your mind about what has shaped you into the person that you are today, whether you're cold, introverted, defensive, angry, scared, if you're all those things wrapped into one and that has formed you into kind of a person that doesn't push themselves to really, really like do anything because you're so overwhelmed with like the reality of what has happened to you. You feel so scared. You just can't push through that and open yourself up to the love of what life has to offer. 
No, it sounds like a lot of like weird. <laughs> what is it? Jibble jabble, boggle roggle. I don't know. Gibbering. But confronting your past and saying, "Okay, this 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 happened to me, and." This was really scary and I didn't deserve this and I don't understand why I wasn't protected and why people didn't really um, take care of me when I needed to be taken care of. When I think about that, it just creates a lot of insecurities and it makes me sad and it makes me scared and it makes me angry and it makes me just want to kind of fall back into myself and protect myself, sort of like hug myself like you know, protect myself. I close myself off. I don't feel because feeling is too much. It hurts and I don't want to hurt. When you can really take a moment to think about why you're hurting and is the hurting going to really go on forever? Is it, are you ever, am I ever going to feel better or is this it? Like, is this it? Hi. Hi, Timmy. This is Timmy. Hi, Timmy. Hi. Timmy caught me talking to myself on the camera. I'm just being a nerd. Oh. I just didn't want to. Okay, well, listen, first of all, you cannot be in here with no shoes on. Okay, jump to the couch. This is the last time you're going to be able to do that because there's glass on the floor. Find a spot and plop down. I know the pickles to Pittsburgh. And look at it. The boxcar. Yeah, the boxcar. And then look, catastrophe cat. You like this one. Oh, okay. I like that. And cats and kids. I, I don't know if you remember. I know, that's what I was, I was thinking of you. I'm like, ah, oh, this box. Timmy's going to like this. Because Timmy's probably read, like, every single book. Oh, and every single box. He definitely... Hello, 4.0. Okay. With no shoes on in the garage. And Charlie on his lap. And what are you playing, bud? Pokemon Sun. Yay, Pokemon Sun. I was just talking about how I want to convert the garage and the backyard into sort of like a zen um forest themed kind of habitat yeah i want to convert the garage to like a workshop slash hangout slash activity space it's nice right sitting on the couch out here yeah, it is. Yeah, you seem to like it yesterday. Cozy. It is cozy. Got a lamp. Charlie. We should plug in the lamp. We could totally. Mommy's thinking about how to clean this all up and what to do with things. And I'm going to vlog it. Vlog it. Gonna vlog it. Okay. We're going to vlog it. Okay. Okay, so that's me being dorky. Okay, well, peace out. Yeah, that's a good idea, though. Thanks, Tim. But if I were you, I'd get like a camera camera. We have one. We have a Go Go Cam. What's it called? GoPro. GoPro. Tyson's GoPro. Well, yeah, but you know, I'm sure he'd let me use it. I did, you know, give birth to him. Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> He's a cute dog. You know that, mommy? Yes, dear. Can you hear me? Don't let the pigeon drive the bus. Oh, <gasps> Dory story. Like, I know, Dory. And you stole know this is based. But do you, okay, we borrowed it and we just forgot to take it back, and, and I don't know what happened. Okay, wink, wink, nudge, Dory nudge. story. I think this is based on a true story. Boy, okay, yeah. maybe it's not. But it made me think about another. Um, free Willy. Another not Free Willy, but another like Orca. They like freed. The, one of the orcas they had in captivity. I forgot the orca's name. Was it? It wasn't Dory, but it was um. Georgie. No, no, no. My favorite, my favorite duck themed. Book. Anyways, they freed her mm -hmm. into the ocean, but in sort of like a like a. It was like still sort of netted away from the rest of the ocean, so she was still technically in captivity, and she had like this huge space to to swim in, and everything was great, but she was socialized with humans, and so. She would, you know, swim up to boats and try and interact with people. And for some reason, like, the scientific community at the time thought it was a bad idea for her to be socializing. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's Nikita is her name. 
Okay. Nikita, I'm not sure. We'll have to look it up as soon as we are done talking about it. But um, anyways, they passed a law that people were not allowed to interact with her. I think it was Nikita. I want to say Nikita or Lupe. Lupe. Lupe or Nikita. Guadalupe? No, not Guadalupe, but Lupe. L-U-P-E or Nikita. Anyways, they were... Anyways, the, the whale got sad, or, you know, technically it's a dolphin, got sad, and it was a huge controversy on if that was, like, the right thing to do or not, or... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyways, the whale ended up dying. Why? Of sadness? No, I don't think of sadness, but... We'll have to research it more. I'm trying to catch See, these are the things know. that we got to, like, re learn about, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And then think about the pigeon wants a puppy okay so which one do you want me to read to you don't let the pigeon stay up late don't let the pigeon stay up late the pigeon wants a puppy don't let the pigeon the pigeon drive the bus don't let the pigeon stay up late that one how about froggy's baby sister oh do you remember that one? Oh, of course you know this one. Oh yeah the way mothers are this is one of your favorites I we gotta one. put this back in the house with us of course. You would ask me to read this to you all the time. I remember that book. I remember she was like, um, like the little cat didn't want to, like, you know, go inside or like didn't want to take a bath. Why do you love me? <laughs> right? Isn't that how it went? I I think it's been. Such Elmer a in the snow. Oh. I don't know about Elmer. That's an elephant. I don't have a lot of memories oh, of it's an that one. The pigeon finds a hot dog. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> hot dog. No. What else is in there? Geology. Yes, which is so interesting. <clears throat> Especially when we're doing road trips. Yip, yip. Yip, yip. Yip, yip. Oh, what's that one? Al Kipion does my shirt. Al Capone. Remember, he's that mobster. Oh, hope. I'm trapped in my principal's body. Okay. <laughs> that would not be fun. No, not at all. Imagine having to suspend one of your friends. Ooh, deep ocean creatures. Creatures it used to be into this kind of stuff. I still am. Oh, what about this one? <clears throat> Do you remember the next one? A little raccoon takes charge. Mm -hmm. No, but I do remember this one. Oh, uh, I already know that author right away just by the. Yep. Who's that? Um, David Shannon, I think. That's right. right. What other book did he write? Uh. Bad David or something That's like right. that. No David. No David. Um, <clears throat> um, too many toys. Who wrote Duck on a Bike? I don't know. I think it might have been him, actually. I don't think it was him. Was it Sean? I don't know. Here, can, can you read this one, though? Yeah, let's read it. Best Friends book. Okay. <clears throat> don't let the pigeons stay up. Oh, my. Don't let the ducks stay up. Charlie, are you going to sit down and, and yes, listen to the story? Yes. Okay. You're great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. still recording. Well, hmm. just for fun. Just oh, Charlie Bud. Hi, friend. Charlie's a cute cat. <clears throat> okay. One. Don't let the pigeon stay up late. Hey, hey. Okay, so the words and pictures by Mo. Will Williams. Mo Willems or Williams, sorry. It doesn't want to focus. <clears throat> Mo Willems. Mo Willems. <clears throat> Which is a nice name. We like it. Don't let the pigeons stay up late. Clouds in the sky. Well, I hear I'll read it. I'll read it. I'm gonna pause this. Okay.